Wood should not last this long. That's the problem. Walk through medieval halls, towers and outbuildings, and you're standing on boards that had every reason to fail. Damp winters, smoke-filled rooms, insects, centuries of weight, and yet they're still stiff, square, and carrying load like they were installed last decade. This wasn't luck. It wasn't better trees. It was a deliberate strengthening method, quietly perfected, fiercely guarded, and almost completely erased from written history. Today, we are pulling it back into the light. This matters, not as trivia, as applied knowledge, because medieval craftsmen understood something most modern builders forgot. Strength is created before construction begins. Medieval builders knew raw wood was a liability. Fresh sawn boards are unstable by nature. Moisture is locked inside the fibres, unevenly distributed, waiting to escape. As it does, internal stress builds. Boards cup, they twist, they split. Strength drops long before rot ever shows its face. Now put that wood into a medieval environment. Long wet seasons, poor ventilation, constant smoke, no climate control. If untreated boards were installed straight from the saw, they failed early and often. Floors softened. Doors went out of square. Roof decking sagged. Craftsmen didn't need microscopes to see this. They watched structures fail, and they noticed something else just as important. Boards exposed to certain liquids, smoke, and repeated low heat behaved differently. They stiffened. They resisted insects, they cracked less, they carried weight better. That observation changed everything. The most powerful medieval wood strengthener was invisible. The core of this forgotten process was tannin saturation. Not paint, not oil, not surface treatment. This worked from the inside out. Tannins are natural compounds found in oak bark, walnut hulls, chestnut, acorns, and certain leaves. Medieval tanners knew tannins intimately. They used them to turn raw hides into durable leather. Woodworkers learned from them. Boards meant for floors, doors, benches, stairs, wagon beds, and structural decking were soaked in tannin-rich solutions before installation. Oak bark was boiled for hours until the water turned dark and acidic. This wasn't casual. It was controlled. The resulting liquid was potent. Boards were submerged completely. Days for thinner stock. Weeks for thicker planks. What happened next wasn't cosmetic. It was chemical. The tannin solution displaced free water inside the wood. It reacted with lignin and cellulose, stiffening the fibre bonds themselves. It also made the wood chemically hostile to insects and fungi. Once dried, these boards were heavier, harder, more abrasion resistant. Compression strength improved, bending resistance increased. Same tree, same dimensions different material. That's why medieval floors still feel stiff underfoot. So why didn't anyone write this down clearly? Because medieval craftsmen protected advantage with teeth. Written manuals were rare and intentionally vague. A method that increased strength without increasing material cost was gold. Apprentices learned by watching, repeating, and being corrected not by reading instructions. Tannin treatment left almost no obvious surface marker. Maybe a subtle darkening. No charring, no carving, nothing dramatic. Once installed, the boards looked ordinary. That invisibility helped the method vanish from historical attention even as the material itself survived. The evidence wasn't in the books. It was underfoot. After soaking, boards weren't rushed into use. 
This is where patience entered the equation. They were dried slowly in smoke-filled spaces, not high heat, not flame, low, steady warmth, smoke curing mattered. Low heat drove out remaining moisture evenly. Smoke compounds sealed surface pores. Phenols and aldehydes in wood smoke added another layer of fungal resistance. This wasn't accidental. It was observed and repeated. Boards were stacked with spacers to allow airflow. Craftsmen watched closely. Any early warping was corrected while the wood was still pliable. Weighted. Clamped. Restacked. This drying phase took weeks. Once set, these boards held their shape stubbornly. The combination of tannin saturation and smoke curing created material that behaved less like raw lumber and more like engineered wood. Centuries before plywood, medieval builders were already modifying wood at the cellular level. This process took time and fuel. It wasn't wasted on disposable components. Treated boards went into floors of great halls, stair treads, doors, monastery benches, storage lofts, and wagon beds. Anywhere weight, wear, and moisture collided. In castles and fortified towns, they were used in hoardings and elevated walkways exposed to rain and sun. Defensive structures could not afford failure. Rot resistance mattered. Load capacity mattered. Iron fasteners might rust away. The boards kept working. That's why so many medieval interiors outlasted later renovations. This ancient method still works today with minimal adaptation. This isn't museum knowledge. It's practical. Modern builders, homesteaders and survivalists can apply this process right now. Start with tannin-rich material, oak bark, acorns, walnut hulls. Boil them for several hours until the liquid turns dark. Submerge rough-sawn boards completely. Weight them down so they don't float. Soak thin boards for at least three days. Thicker stock up to two weeks. After soaking, dry slowly in shade with good airflow. If possible, expose the boards to cool wood smoke. No direct flame. No high heat. Rotate boards periodically. Correct early warping with weight or clamping during drying. Yes, it takes time. But the payoff is massive. These boards are ideal for cabin floors, exterior doors, tool benches, raised storage platforms, load-bearing shelving, and anywhere replacement would be costly or difficult. You trade days or weeks now for decades of reliability later. Medieval builders understood that equation instinctively. This explains why medieval woodwork refuses to fail quietly. The survival of medieval wooden interiors is not a mystery. It's a lesson. Strength wasn't added after failure. It was engineered before assembly. By altering wood at the cellular level, Craftsmen reduced maintenance, conserved resources, and built structures that could survive neglect, weather, and time itself. This knowledge was quiet, practical, ruthlessly effective. And that's why it lasted for centuries without needing to be written down. If this breakdown sharpened how you understand medieval craftsmanship and gave you techniques you can actually use, subscribe to History HQ. Share this with fellow history buffs and survival-minded builders. The past still has tools worth carrying forward.